Form 24 family, I hope you guys are doing well. Today, I'm going to be sharing my favorite soft tissue maintenance strategies um, and stretches to help you on your rucking journey. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of rucking. I've been rucking regularly for a couple years now. I started rucking during the pandemic um, and I have a couple videos on my channel um, talking about why I believe in rucking and then also how to build rucking into like a strength training program. Uh, but I've never done like a recovery um, or a stretching routine that is rucking specific, okay? And I think that this is actually pretty important. Um, just the demand that rucking puts on your body is different than anything else, okay? So in some of my other videos, I kind of explain how rucking is kind of the intersection between like conditioning and strength training. Um, so if you're going for an hour, hour and a half long run, you're definitely tapping into that endurance side of the spectrum. Uh, but as you add load to your body, uh, you're constantly working on your strength. So the way this video is gonna work is we're gonna go through um, a pretty good handful of like soft tissue maintenance strategies and techniques. Um, and then we'll, at the end, we'll go through a few stretches. Um, I've got a lot of weird tools here that I'll show you. I mean, you might be familiar with some of them, you know, like a, a foam roller obviously is pretty common. Um, lacrosse ball is pretty common. I do have like a massage stick um, and then a peanut. If you don't know about the peanut, this, this might change your life maybe. But we're gonna start from the ground. So we're gonna start with our feet and we're gonna work up, okay? So we'll work your calves, your quads, your glutes, um, and even up into your upper back. There's a lot of stuff to cover, so let's not waste any more time. Uh, we're gonna start with the bottoms of your feet. First tool we're gonna use um, is just your general, regular lacrosse ball, okay? This is a, a powerful tool. You should have this in your arsenal. Uh, but we're just gonna be rolling the inside and the outside arches of your feet, okay? So roll in the inside arch, roll the outside arch, roll up onto your heel, if there is a tender spot, you can spend a little extra time on that, give that a little extra love. Um, you don't have to spend like a ton of time on this, like just a couple minutes on each one of these uh, spots um, and then move on. Okay, the next muscle group we're gonna work on is your calves and your anterior tibialis, okay? So your anterior tib is like the front muscular system um, of your shins, okay? So if you get shin splints, the, it's your anterior tib. Uh, but the tool that we're gonna be using for this is this massage stick. We're gonna be massaging that anterior tib, so the front of your shins, um, and then we're gonna be uh, rolling on your calves, okay? So again, make sure you're getting the inside calf and the outside calf. Um, you can go directly on the calf, like to, like right through like the thickest, meatiest part of your calf, uh, but then make sure to get the edges, okay? So come in from the side to get the insides and the outside of your calf. That will make a huge difference on the way that your calf and your Achilles feels. Okay, continuing to move up the body, we are now gonna be working on your quads. Um, we're gonna go back to your lacrosse ball. So there are a bunch of different trigger point techniques that you can do with your quad. Um, I'm gonna give you my favorite. I think that my favorite is to put this ball right on like the teardrop of your quad, okay? So right um, kind of on that inside thickest, strongest part of your quad. So we're gonna lay down, we're gonna put this ball right on that point, right on that teardrop, um, and then we're gonna go through 10 knee flexions, full knee flexions, okay? So full range of motion through your knee, um, heel to butt, um, and then full extension on the opposite end. So um, big quad movement here as you're trigger pointing with this ball. If you've never done this, this will probably be pretty sensitive. Okay, so after you finish your quads, um, we're gonna hit your TFL, okay? So your TFL is tensor fascia latte or something, or lata or something like that, uh, but it's a glute compensator muscle. Um, this muscle specifically during rucking is one of my like hot spots. So the way that we're gonna find this is we're gonna take your lacrosse ball, we're gonna find your hip bone, we're gonna go one ball down, and then one ball over, okay? So it's kind of on like the front corner um, of your hip. And again, we're just gonna lay down right on top of this ball. Um, let that ball dig into that muscular system. Um, this will probably be extremely tender, okay? So this is a really common hot spot for a lot of people. Um, we're not gonna roll or anything like that on this one. We're just gonna let that ball dig into that spot. So spend a little bit of time on there. Um, again, you kinda have to be at like a 45 degree angle so you're not coming right from the side and you're not coming in right from the front. Um, kinda split the difference there. Front corner um, of your hip. Okay, so now we're gonna trigger point your glutes, okay? And this might be one that you guys have seen before. We're gonna use the roller. Um, I like to use these trigger point rollers. Um, they just have like a nice um, balance between like squishiness um, and then firmness on the inside, okay? I do have a couple of like the cheap Amazon rollers. Um, and personally, I think that they're a little too soft. Um, the way that we're gonna roll you on your glutes is you're gonna sit directly on top of it. 
Um, you're gonna cross your leg over, so you're gonna, let's go like right over left, okay? So we're gonna cross your right leg over your left side, um, and then we're gonna rotate your hips so that you're hitting that right hip kind of again from the back corner. So uh, we're gonna trigger point the TFL from the front corner of your hips, um, and then we're gonna roll on this glute um, kind of from the back corner of your hips. Okay, here's your warning. This is the worst one of the whole series, okay? This one's gonna be the most sensitive. Uh, we're gonna continue to use this roller, uh, but this is gonna be your IT band, okay? And we're not just gonna roll right on top of it, okay? But basically, um, your IT band is your glute tendon, okay? So it wraps all the way around um, your glute and it runs right down the outside of your leg, just like the seam of your pants. Um, it crosses over your patella tendon and then it attaches um, underneath your patella tendon, okay? So it actually attaches on your lower leg. Uh, this is the only tendon in your body that crosses two joints, okay? It crosses your hip joint and it crosses your knee joint. So this is an extremely important tendon. Um, and so we wanna make sure that we're giving it the attention that it deserves. Okay, so we're gonna find a spot about two thirds of the way down your IT band. So getting kind of close to that knee. Um, and again, just like a couple of these other ones, we're gonna kind of find the front corner um, of that quad, okay? So front corner of the quad, we're not going straight from the side. Um, we're definitely not coming straight from the front, but uh, kind of find that 45 degree angle. Um, two thirds of the way down your quad, okay? So we're gonna put a little pressure on there and then we're gonna go through your full knee flexions, okay? Again, just like the quad, um, heel to butt um, and then full extension through that knee. Um, this is going to be extremely tender, all right? And just bear through it, just fight through it, okay? It's gonna be worth it, I promise. Um, as soon as you get off that roller, all that tension will be released. Um, it's not gonna be painful at all. So just go through those 10 large knee flexions, nice and slow, nice and easy. Um, really get in there, okay? And then the final trigger point is the peanut, okay? This peanut is actually two lacrosse balls just duct taped together, okay? Uh, super cheap, super easy, uh, very, very useful. Um, so this peanut, we're gonna lay down on top of it. This is gonna go right between our scaps. Um, we're gonna lay on it horizontally, okay? We don't lay on it vertically, uh, so this does not go up and down along our spine. It goes across right between our shoulder blades. Uh, so if you're rucking, you know uh, that your upper back can get very tired. Uh, this peanut is gonna help mitigate that, okay? So we're gonna go right between those two shoulder blades. We're gonna go through 10 chest flies, and then we're gonna go through 10 uh, arm scissors. Let that peanut do its job. Um, some people find a little bit more tenderness towards the upper, your, or the upper part of your scapula. Some people are a little bit more tender towards the bottom of your scaps, uh, but just kind of play with it, okay? So just move it. I mean, you don't need to move it much, a quarter inch or so, um, up or down until you really find that sweet spot. Um, and then just chill right on that sweet spot as you go through those arm movements. Now that that's done, uh, now we're gonna move into some of the stretches. So do your soft tissue stuff first, um, and then move into these static stretches. But uh, the first thing is kind of a weird one, and you definitely don't need this device. Uh, one of my clients brought this device in uh, to me and just kind of gave it to me, and like when he gave it to me, I kind of was like, oh, sweet, like I rolled my eyes a little bit. Uh, but after using it, and then also letting other, uh, you know, the Perform 24 clients use it, it's definitely a fan favorite. This is called a calf stretcher. Um, basically like you'll just wedge this up against um, a firm vertical post like I think door frames are what it's designed for but I typically will just kind of wedge it up against our rack um, and it does provide an excellent calf stretch so um, you know as you're rucking like your calves just get hammered um, that load on top of your lower half um, it is extreme um, and so your calves get worn out really quick this calf stretcher is probably the best thing that I've found uh, to stretch those calves. It works great, to be honest with you. You can do this without the device. Um, just kind of wedge your heel onto the floor um, and just kind of go through the same stretch. Uh, but if you want to get something that's a little bit better than just you know using the floor, uh, this is better. Okay, so now we're gonna work on your ankles and your arches. Um, we're gonna go through a full kneel plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Um, my knees are kind of sensitive, uh, so I do like to go up on a pad on this. So I'll get my knees on a pad or a soft surface. Um, you could use a pillow or something like that. Um, and then we're just gonna be stretching out your arches. So hitting that big dorsiflexion first, um, really letting like your toes stretch out. Um, sit back into them, sit into your knees, like full knee flexion here, uh, but really get a good stretch. Uh, obviously, the more pressure you put on this, the deeper that stretch will be. So uh, full dorsiflexion, really stretch those arches out, and then we're gonna flip over, uh, putting the tops of your feet on the floor um, into that plantar flexion. So 
you know, work maybe two or three each of these 15 seconds or so each. That'll again make a huge difference on how your Achilles feels. And then finally, we need to stretch out the hips a little bit. And I think the best one uh, that for rucking is your pigeon pose. Okay, the pigeon pose is a very popular stretch for a reason. Um, obviously, if you can do this on the floor, go ahead and do this on the floor. Um, if that's a little too intense, personally, I like to do it up on a bench. Um, so I'll kind of just, you know, throw my leg up on a bench, go through the pigeon pose. Um, if you even need a further regression from that, sometimes I'll flip that bench into an incline position um, and then go through my pigeon pose um, with the incline bench. Okay, so um, obviously your hip um, and your knee are going up the incline and your foot is going down the incline. Uh, but this is a really, really popular stretch. Um, if you're really tight through your hips, uh, start with that incline, work to a flat bench, and then eventually you can work to the floor. Um, that's your progression there, okay? Okay, wow, that was a lot of information. Um, hopefully you guys did capture that. Uh, but go through this series. I mean, go through that whole trigger point series, the whole soft tissue series, and then hit those stretches um, and let me know how you feel, okay? So um, if you've never done anything like this, I have a feeling you're gonna see a gigantic difference right out of the gate. Um, all the items that I use, I will post them below just if you're curious in them. Um, you could use a foam roller by itself for a lot of these things. You could use a lacrosse ball by itself for a lot of these things, okay? So um, you don't have to get these devices, uh, but if you want them, I'll link them below. Let me know how this goes. Shoot me a follow on Instagram. I'm posting my like day-to-day, -day, weekly um, training, rucking on my Instagram page pretty frequently. I'm at perform24 um, on Instagram. But in the meantime, train hard, live full. See you in the next one.